Welcome to the Methodology Institute's SPSS video tutorial series, sponsored by the LSE Annual Fund. In this tutorial, we're going to be using SPSS to perform the t-test for the difference between means for two independent groups. And the response variable that we're going to be using is resources, which I've highlighted here in variable view. And this is a scale variable which takes values from 1 to 10 to indicate respondents' agreement with the statement we're using up the Earth's resources too quickly. And so we're going to be testing the difference between average scores on this resources variable between men and women in our sample data. And so in this case, our grouping or explanatory variable is going to be gender, which I'll highlight for you here. And before we do move on to run the t-test, it is helpful if we know how our grouping variable has been coded. And we can find this out just by clicking on the right hand side of the values box for the gender variable. And this will show us that female respondents in our sample have been coded with the value 0, whereas male respondents in our sample have been coded with the value 1. So having ascertained the coding for our grouping variable, we can just cancel to come out of the value labels and we're now ready to run the analysis. And to do that we need to select the Analyze drop down menu and then under Compare Means we need to select the Independent Samples t-test. And the first thing we need to do here is select our test variable or response variable from the list on the left hand side and that's this one here, we're using up the Earth's resources too quickly. We click that with the left mouse button and then use the top arrow to move it into the test variables box. And then secondly we need to select our grouping or explanatory variable. And that was respondent's gender, this one here. And then we use the bottom arrow to move that into the grouping variable box. The notice SPSS then displays these two question marks here. And that's to remind us that we need to tell SPSS how our grouping variable has been coded. And to do that we click on define groups. And then we enter the numeric code or value that defined each of the two groups. So it was zero for female respondents and one for male respondents. And we then click continue. And that's all that we need to do at this stage. So we're now ready to click OK and run the analysis. So we can see that the results of our test are now shown here in the output viewer window. So the box at the top just provides us with some summary statistics for our test variable based on the two groups that we're comparing. So for this example, we can see firstly that we have the sample size amongst female respondents, which was 111, and amongst male respondents, 74. And next we can see the mean for our test or explanatory variable, which of course was the attitude scale that measured agreement with the statement, we're using up the Earth's resources too quickly. And the mean score for women on that scale was 5.99, whereas the mean score for male respondents was 4.55 and we're also provided with the standard deviation for our female and male respondents and a standard error for the mean of each of those two groups. So those are the summary statistics but it's really the second table in the output that we're most interested in and this provides us with the results of our independent samples t-test. And the first two columns in this table provide us with the results of something known as Levine's test which is a test for equal variances between the two groups from our sample data. So I'm actually not going to go into the interpretation for Levine's test, other than to say that in some instances it may make a difference as to whether or not you read from the first row in the output table labelled equal variances assumed, or the second row labelled equal variances not assumed. In the case of this example, I'm satisfied that the assumption of equal variances really doesn't make any substantive difference to our interpretation of the results for the t-test. So on that basis, let's move on to have a look at the test statistic and its p-value, and we'll continue to read from the first row in this case. And so this provides us with a t-statistic of 4.429, and that's at 183 degrees of freedom, with an accompanying p-value shown in the SIG column, the SPSS states, as 0 0.000, but which we would always state and interpret as less than 0.001. And so on the basis of these results for the t-test, with a test statistic of 4.429 and an accompanying p-value of less than 0 0.001, 
we can reject the null hypothesis, which would state that attitudes towards resource depletion are the same for men and women in the population from which our sample data was drawn. And with the evidence we've got here, we can reject that null hypothesis at least to the 5% level. So in other words, there is strong evidence here to suggest that on average, attitudes towards resource depletion do differ between the men and women in the population from which our sample was drawn. So going back to the output table for the t-test, there's one last piece of relevant information that we're provided with, and that's the lower and upper bound of the 95% confidence interval for the difference in mean responses between our two groups. So again, reading from the top row in our output, the 95% confidence interval generated here is between 0.797 and 2.077. And so we could interpret this by saying that we can be 95% confident that in the population from which our sample data was drawn, the mean difference in agreement with the statement on resource depletion between men and women was between 0.797 and 2.077. And so in this example, we seem to be seeing a situation whereby female respondents are on average more supportive than male respondents of the position that the Earth's resources are being depleted at unsustainable levels. Alright, so that concludes this tutorial, in which I've demonstrated how to generate results for an independent samples t-test in SPSS, and also how to find and interpret the key information such as the t-statistic, its p-value, and a 95% confidence interval for the difference in mean scores between the two groups.